Today, we look at one of boxing's early practitioners and the first world middleweight champion. How good was nonpareil Jack Dempsey? John Edward Kelly was born December 15, 1862, in Curran, County Kildare, British Ireland. Dempsey stood 5 feet 8 inches. He had an aggregate weight of 148 pounds for his career. Dempsey's career spanned from 1883 to 1895. He had 50 wins, 3 losses, and 11 draws. He also had one no contest and one on decision bout. 23 of his wins were by knockout. His win percentage was 75, and his knockout percentage was 34. Though he primarily weighed in around the welterweight limit, Dempsey is most associated with the middleweight division, ranging from 148 to 160 pounds. Dempsey started as a great wrestler, and sparring sessions with wrestlers and boxers led him to pursue boxing as his trade. Dempsey was a scientific boxer who used all areas of the ring on defense and possessed excellent defensive skills. His abilities allowed him to thrive and go through the majority of his career undefeated in London prize ring and the Marquess of Queensbury rules, sometimes blending the two. Dempsey started his career racking up several wins in New York. After a January 1886 no contest with astute boxing mind, Professor Mike Donovan, Dempsey met Jack Fogarty on February 2, 1886, in his first significant contest. The fight took place at the Clarendon Hall in New York. Dempsey would pick up a 27th round TKO victory in a fight to the finish. On March 14, 1886, Dempsey clashed with George LaBlanche for the American middleweight title in Larchmont, New York. The two fought a close fight through the early part of the contest. Dempsey dropped LaBlanche in the 10th, Dempsey dropped LaBlanche for a second time in the 13th forcing his corner to throw in the sponge, stopping the fight. On November 27, 1886, Dempsey would take on contender Jack Burke, fighting to a 10-round draw and a close fight. Dempsey took on John Reagan on December 13, 1887, in a Long Island, New York fight billed as the middleweight championship of America. The two men fought under the London Prizering rules at undisclosed locations accessed via tugboat. The two men battled ferociously for 15 rounds as the tide started to come in where the fight was taking place. Given such, the fight was relocated 25 miles away. The two men continued the battle with Reagan, at one point, spiking Dempsey near the shin, causing a rush of blood to flow. Dempsey blamed Reagan's trainer, Professor Mike Donovan, whom Dempsey had previously fought, for encouraging the foul. Dempsey would prove to be the greater fighter as Reagan's corner was forced to throw in the sponge in the 44th round handing Dempsey the hard-fought victory. In his next fight, on January 31, 1888, Dempsey would defeat well-traveled heavyweight contender Dominic McCaffrey via a 10-round points win despite giving up 11-plus pounds to McCaffrey. On November 15, 1888, Dempsey would again face Professor Mike Donovan with the two men fighting to a draw. Dempsey would follow that fight up with a high-stakes rematch against George LaBlanche on August 27, 1889, in San Francisco. The fight would be dubbed the Pivot Punch Fight. Dempsey came into the fight undefeated with 49 victories and 10 draws. The fight would prove to be more of a test for Dempsey, though he maintained an edge throughout the fight. Dempsey would be knocked out in the 32nd round as LaBlanche landed a Pivot Punch. The pivot punch was an illegal shot thrown with a backfist. Dempsey's biggest fight to date would come on February 18, 1890, when he took on Billy McCarthy for what was recognized as the inaugural World Middleweight Championship. Dempsey would cement his legacy by stopping McCarthy in the 28th round to claim the first World Middleweight Championship. Some sources reported Dempsey as being the World Middleweight Champion in 1884. If Dempsey's reign as world middleweight champion truly commenced in February of 1890, it would be short-lived. In his very next fight, on January 14, 1891, Dempsey would face a man who would become boxing's first-ever three-way champion, Ruby Robert, more famously known as the fighting blacksmith, Bob Fitzsimmons. The fight took place at the Olympic Sporting Club in New Orleans, Louisiana. 
Dempsey weighed 147 and a half pounds, while Fitzsimmons tipped the scales at 150 and a half pounds, both well under the now standard 160 pound middleweight limit. The bell to start the fight rang at 9.25 p.m. Bob Fitzsimmons landed the first significant punch of the fight as he trailed Dempsey all over the ring to cut him off. As the rounds proceeded, the story of the fight was Dempsey using his defense to try to stay away from Fitzsimmons, and Fitzsimmons showing his dominance as he repeatedly plastered Dempsey with punches, busting up his face. In the 13th round, Bob quickly landed a combination to send Dempsey to the canvas. Dempsey made a couple of attempts to rise, but the referee had seen enough as the fight was stopped making Fitzsimmons the new middleweight champion of the world. Dempsey would only fight three more times. After a four-round points victory over Billy Keough in 1893 and a 20-round draw in a rematch with Billy McCarthy in 1894, Dempsey's next great test would be against one of the greatest welterweight and middleweight champions in boxing history, Tommy Ryan. The fight took place on January 18, 1895. Ryan came into the fight undefeated in 39 bouts and left with another victory as he dispatched Dempsey in three rounds. It would later be revealed that Dempsey had started to deteriorate due to tuberculosis by the Ryan fight. After a second stint with the disease, Dempsey would be dead only nine months later, likely in what would have been the prime of his career. Dempsey faced three Hall of Famers. His most notable fights were against George LaBlanche Hall of Famer Mike Donovan Hall of Famer Bob Fitzsimmons and Hall of Famer Tommy Ryan Non-Perial Jack Dempsey died on November 1, 1895, at 32 from tuberculosis. Dempsey was arguably the second most famous fighter in the world, only second to John L. Sullivan. Dempsey brought a level of science and intellect to boxing, which would see him regarded as the greatest middleweight by many in the early days of the sport. He shall ever remain unrivaled. Dempsey was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1992.